Hello. All right. Wow, that's an elephant statue behind me. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm in St. Thomas Church, one of the oldest in the world, built first in 52 AD. Ordered, built by Mr. Thomas himself, who's the disciple and friend of Jesus, whose all 12 disciples' mission it was to go to every corner of earth that they knew, and the Roman Empire and beyond, to spread the word of Jesus and, uh, you know, make people Christian, baptize them, and build churches and communities and stuff. So this is one of the oldest. So Thomas and another guy from his name were sent to <clears throat> Parthia. One apostle, which is Persia, Iran now. And Thomas was sent to Northwest India. So in Northwest India, he, his boat was almost there. He went with a Jewish merchant. Remember, Thomas was Jewish originally and became Christian. Uh, he was with a Jewish merchant that decided to go that had been to India before. You know, the Romans and everybody were trading with the Indians here on the Malabar coast of northern India too for many hundreds, probably thousands of years. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there we go. Let's put something behind me there. So back there, I'll tell what that is, where that cross is right there. Okay, so <clears throat> Thomas was pulling up towards northeast, north, West, Northwest India, probably around Gujarat, or where modern Mumbai is, in a boat, and they were got attacked. <laughs> so locals sent a boat to meet them. I don't know what the kingdom was at that time, or the rulers. There's so many in Indian history, it's hard to keep track of and pronounce the names. <clears throat> so they were attacked, and the Jewish merchant and Thomas were like, all right, forget this, we're going south. And uh, they went south down the Arabian Sea coast, right around here, and landed kind of nearby here, in between this city where I am right now, Palayur, and Kochi, in the ancient port, which we're not going to go to because it's no longer there. It got washed away by a flood long ago. <clears throat> so Thomas went around the Kerala, and he built, had seven churches built, 52 A.D. Year 52, so we're in 2023, do the quick math, how long ago was that? I don't know, but someone's trying to pray. Can you put the, in the calculator? 2023 minus 52. <laughs> All right, so he came here, and uh, he found Jewish communities in India. I don't know the story exactly behind that. They might have fled the Roman Empire at some point, or fled Jerusalem. 1971. 1,971 years ago this happened. Okay. They might have fled the Roman Empire from being persecuted? When was the first siege? No, that was after that. The siege of, siege of Jerusalem was in year 70. Yeah, I have no idea. Maybe it was way back with the Babylonians and all that stuff where they fled and came to India. That's possible. Maybe even earlier. Or... At some point there, I don't know, man. Alexander came to India, but with the Greeks, maybe brought some Jew Jews with them. I don't know, man. But anyways, he, Thomas found some Jewish communities here, and he told them, hey, hey, listen, this is what I saw back in Israel, man, back in our homeland that Roman occupied, Judea. Um, this guy, Jesus, was pretty cool, man. Uh, let me tell you about him. And a bunch of people got converted, and they worshipped in this church. So let's go look at the original section of it. 52 AD, I like this, a microphone. <laughs> but I want to walk around, so the sound will now go down a little bit. Okay. Are we coming back in here? Yeah. Okay, so he obviously convinced a bunch of people about Christianity, and Thomas is interesting. They call him Doubting Thomas, because when everyone was like, hey man, Jesus rose from the dead after he got crucified. Thomas was like, no way, no way. I, I got to see this for myself. I want to see his wounds on his hands, and he got stabbed in the side. Um, yeah, no, they got a bloody Jesus up there. There we go. <laughs> so Thomas... This is back in Israel, or Judea, province of Rome. Thomas uh, <clears throat> was 
approached by Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, and uh, he said, hey Thomas, I know what you said. You touched my wounds, touched my hands, feel it with your own hand, and touched my side of my body where it's bleeding up there. And he did, and he, it felt like fleshy, but it, Jesus was obviously not alive, not dead. Uh, I don't know how to explain that. But he touched it and he went, oh my, he said, oh my Lord, my God, oh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry for doubting you, basically. There's a relic of him right in there, a little piece of his bone, which is cool. All right, so all the 12 apostles were convinced, man. They witnessed something crazy. I think this is Thomas here, so he has a spear with him. We're going to talk about that at the end of his story. All right, so let's fast forward. 52 AD, he came here. Seven churches. This is one of the main earliest ones. That piece down there, you can see it. Maybe I'll film the other. Hello, all right. Wow. Guryuvayur, Kerala. This isn't the first time I've been to the lands where one of Jesus' friends, the 12 disciples, once was. I think I've been to a few spots like that. But I'm here again in another one. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, Yes. I'm from America. Yes. California. California. San Francisco. Hotel California. No, 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 no. I don't want to go back there. <laughs> ah, okay. He wants my American passport. Yes, I have a good, I have a good passport. All right. He distracted me. So we're going to go find this place. One of 12 or so churches. The St. Thomas. His name Thomas. Let's just call him Thomas. He has a whole history. Mr. Thomas. Forget the same hood and all this. This is guy. All right, he came here in 52 AD. We're going to get to the holiness. Look at that train going right there. We're going to get to the you know religious aspect and historical aspect and all these things. Wow, that's kind of interesting, actually. Scientific aspect. Yeah, you know how I do it. Let's just start with the basics first. Ge geography. This is where we're at. Good morning, Chad. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Lots of people talking to me. Nice. <laughs> okay. It's a beautiful land here. Let's go. All right. Caution live wires. Uh, that's a thing to caution. All right. These are these massive. Indian trains for the massive Indian population of 1.6 billion people. Trains crisscross country. Originally built by the British, 1800s. The British built the first ever train in Manchester, England. I love trains. All right, this video is not about that, but I just wanted to show that. Uh, the word guru is in the city's name. So a guru is like a special holy prophet, prophet, a holy man kind of person. Guru Vayur, Guru Vayur. I'm here. <laughs> Earth man, I'm an environmental guy. Garbage free. And I like it because it has a, a, a very accurate map of India. It's a little funny person picking up rubbish and putting it in what they call in India the dustbin. Here's my favorite area of India, Nagaland. So this is Nagaland right here. That's my number one favorite people of India. It's on the border of Myanmar. I was here in Goa. I was here in Kathmandu. That is not in India. I was here in the bottom of India, Kanakumari. Right now I'm right about here. Kerala, maybe a little more north. Or Kala's right here, right here. There's lots of places to see in India. Kokadoji, it says up there. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's the former place called Calicut. A very, very, very historic place with, oops, excuse me. A very historic place with uh, 
tons of crazy history like Vasco da Gama Portuguese went there and they landed there after they circled around Africa and then they ended up fighting with the Hindu king there and they had to flee but way 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 five four thousand five thousand years of history and unfortunately we do not have time to go there hello sir yes nice to meet you yes all right um but this is close I'm gonna get ah. All right, man. Always a big water basin at a cool place like this temple. Nani, nani, malaleyami. Peace. What's up? These people are standing in line for lunch. Free lunch. Jay Ganesh. Let's see what's over here, baby. All right. Excuse me. All right. Yes. Yeah, so, big lines, big groups of people. Look at that. And it goes all the way up top too. So you can't have phones in certain areas in this temple. So I'm gonna have to follow the rules. Lots of people are looking at me. Uh, so let's keep moving. And, well, that didn't go exactly as planned. You gotta wear in Kerala these little cloths, just like in Bali, they do the same thing to enter a temple. But they're not very transparent and nice about it. I guess I could have rented one right here. Um, so they got a bunch of people with rifles. Uh, hanging around police in case anyone acts up I could get shot right in the head here if I wanted Bow. <laughs> expired uh, so seeing that automatically gets me all hyped up I'm, I'm automatically in war mode if I see people with rifles like that um, I, I hide around corners I look out for the people with the rifles I'm seeing them through the corner of my eyes I'm re ready to hit the ground if I have to. And when I see that, it's like not nice for me. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> I'm in war mode, so I get all hyped up. I'm ready for war when I see that. <laughs> Hello. So anyways, then they're saying I have the wrong pants. I guess I could have rented this thing right here. And I didn't know, nobody told me that, to go inside the temple. What can you do? So I walk around and then I found this nice guy and I told him I told him my top five favorite Hindu gods and goddesses Ganesh, Durga, Shiva, Malakshmi and Krishna is my fifth favorite. So these guys were cool and being really nice and the guy took me over to Ganesha and then some policemen were harassing me over there asking if I'm a Hindu. So once again in America, when policemen are harassing you, you get into war mode. <laughs> so it happened to me twice here. In America, police are very violent and dangerous. So my mind, and I've had my problems, my mind, obviously when police are coming up to me, I'm again in war mode. You're, you have to defend yourself in America. So that was twice that it happened here. And that's just my mindset. So. I know India is different. I'm in a different country. I have to. I have to respect the rules, but I don't want to be in war mode. I'm leaving now. Hello, sir. You want to be on camera? Hello. How are you? <laughs> Bye. Nani, I really like Kerala. Um, I like you, Kerala. I love Kerala. Yeah. Okay. It's my second favorite place in India after Nagal you are, you are from? Nagaland. I'm from California, America. From yeah. America. San Francisco. Yeah. 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 The Bay Area. As they say, California knows how to party. They want to be in the camera. All right, hello, <laughs> cool. <laughs> I love Kerala. This is a good temple. Hello, hello, good temple. Nice people, nice people. See, all you got to do is be nice to me. You're not nice to me, man. I go crazy. It's just how we are in America. <laughs> you just got to be nice. That's it. That's it. All right, I'm leaving now. Bye. So America has 350 million people. So that means my age bracket, I'm 40. All right, you divide it in half, that's 100 and, uh, 175 million people are men in America. Something like that, am I doing the math right? All right, people in my age bracket, probably, I would say there's, I would say there's 30 million people of my age in America. 30 million people. So there's 30 million people in America from my same generation. And that's around 30 to 50 million people with my same mindset. That's a lot of people. 
Big army. <laughs> if I'm gonna put that in my video. Yeah, I don't know what it is, man. But no, they just have hand sewers. I broke my backpack in there because I had to. You can't have phones and you can't have bags to go inside the temple. So I put all my stuff in. I paid like 40 rupee, and then I didn't even get to go inside anyway. So I shouldn't have gave them that. And while I was doing that, I broke my damn zipper on my back. I don't know if I'm gonna add all that crazy stuff I said. Maybe I will at the end. I was acting super crazy there, man. Uh, hello, sir. Good luck. Yes, nani, nani. You're the man. Stay strong. Um, okay. I stick with my guns. It has to be a really extreme circumstance or the person has to be doing something very interesting for me to give money to someone. I learned this in way back in San Francisco area and the city of San Francisco when I was a kid. I don't give money to nobody on the street for no reason. Um, anyways, we're going now to one of the oldest churches in the world, St. Thomas. And I broke my bag, man. And everybody looks at me all crazy here. It's so funny. <laughs> I love it. I, I match crazy with crazier. <laughs> all right, let's keep moving. Oh man, all these poor people, they have lots of poor people here. Hello, hi. I hope you're okay and won't film them. All right, bye-bye. All right, I usually film some of the walk. Here's a interesting Muslim gateway. This is the path we have to take. Allah. Allah Akbar. There's about 10 religions total in India. It's the most religious country in the world, or spiritual, or whatever you want to call it. By far, in, in the entire world. That's definitely true. Yes, they have they have 10 different religions. That's it, why in Eat, Pray, Love, she came to India for the pray part. Yes. And where did she, do you know where she went for the eating part? Italy. Yes, and do you know where she went for the love part? I forget. It's New York, but I guess it's not love because uh, I don't I don't know what, oh, oh. Okay, anyways, we're walking. Uh, better keep my whips about me. We're kind of in the jungle area now. Big houses, sometimes big houses have big dogs. <laughs> that little stream is polluted with something white. It looks terrible. That's all right. All right, here we go. I love when the call to prayer goes off in places I am. Big good sized moss there. Allah Akbar. <laughs> Hi. It's a big honor to be the, the imam that sings the call to prayer. We're walking here. My broken bag on my pilgrimage. That was very interesting. So we're walking along. There was a nice mosque and masjid, and uh, I was feeling a little hot and frustrated. These women were talking to us. This guy, this older guy, and he went in the mosque to pray. And the women, there was a man that was bedridden inside. He was sick and hurt from something. I think he has a bad heart. He was like kind of pointing at his heart. And it was a little girl that was two, and like five women in their 20s or 30s probably 20s um, Muslim and they had their hair covered and they offered us tea and yeah they, they kind of have a few strands of hair out actually it's kind of interesting they let it fall but then they put it back on and it was very nice they gave us a little snack and made this incredible juice they said it was grapes but I don't know what it was exactly but uh wow look at that chicken that's huge <laughs> I 
Anyways, that was a very nice experience. Obviously, I couldn't film them. They took selfies of us, though. I know, it's so unfair. They can take so She many said photos. she would get her head cut off by her husband if she but took she a photo with me. Photos. Something like that. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> Oh, look at these interesting houses. Oh, sorry. Don't mean to film you. Um, let's keep it going. St. Thomas. St. Thomas this way. St. Thomas we're going. Pilgrimage. <laughs> woman balancing this on my head. All right, so this is something called the Jew, St. Thomas Jew Hill Monument. I guess Thomas was Jewish, if you think about it. All the 12 disciples were of Jesus. God, it's so loud here all the time. Uh, I want to look at this, if I can cross safely. <laughs> Hello, excuse me, look out! Well, we got a uh, monk, and big Jesus, and big Jesus, and I think another Jesus inside there. Not sure why, and I don't. Not sure why it's called Jew Hill either. Well, actually, maybe I do because when Thomas got here, there were Jewish communities here somehow. I don't know how at all. It's very interesting and strange. Made it. Founded by Saint Thomas the Apostle, 52 A.D. Whoa. So obviously it's not built then, but the original was crazy. I'm going to attempt to cross here. Here we go. We made it to this spot that I've been wanting to go to for a few years. This 52 AD. <laughs> Jesus' friend, one of the apostles, Thomas, came here to this spot in India. He decided to go east to India and he founded this church. It's one of the oldest in the entire world. I think that's how I found out about it, Mugs. Of course, there's street dogs. I found out about this because, wow, a grotto. One of the oldest, or the oldest? I think it might be like maybe the oldest, like top five, top ten, top three, something like crazy like that. I looked up the oldest churches in the world, and this was one of them. A nice grotto. Ah. Mother Mary, hello. Yeah, I like Catholic stuff, man. Especially the super historic stuff. I wonder if anything here is actually really old. Ooh, that wind felt nice. You dogs be nice over there. I'm not going to do nothing to you. Hanging out with Jesus. All right. Let's go over here. Whoa! Goddamn motorbikes like that sound like gunshots. There's a little school, folks. There's a little school. And uh, what else sounds like crazy? Some bombs they do for Hindu things. These, they call them crackers, but really like they're like mini little. Fucking, wow, this is beautiful. It sounds like a war is going on all the time around India. All right, I gotta take some pictures. Hey, look, it says Merry Christmas. Picture time. We'll talk more about this in a second. Thomas, 52 AD was right here. And he founded a cross here. I don't know if that's exactly literally what it means. I think he founded like a little chapel, a Christian chapel where the people would meet. He he converted some he converted some uh, Jew, Jews that were here and living here. And they told him he told them about his friend and she and. But I don't know if this is actually what it means, founded a cross, because the, the Romans and the early G, the early Christians didn't um, didn't use crosses as a symbol. Actually, that was later on. Wow. Okay, Saint Sebastian, Saint, Saint Francis Xavier, Saint Mother Teresa, relic of Saint Thomas. Wow. Bone fragment of St. Thomas. He was killed in Chennai. We're gonna go to that spot. We love their relics of saints. We've seen a lot of them in our day. 
guy. They like pieces of bodies of people. It's very cool. <laughs> Actually. Look at this place. Wow. Last Supper image here. Thomas. It's actually that one. <laughs> so he and another guy were ordered to go to Parthia, which is Persia. Spread the word. And Northwest India. But he was on his way to Northwest West India. Thomas there. Off the coast, his boat got attacked. He was with a Jewish merchant that took him out there. So he came down here to Kerala, the Malabar coast. Instead. And he died in India. Put to death and executed in July. He's down there when they're renovating this. The bottom level there is, a, and that's dirt from where he was uh, martyred, killed. All right, that bottom level there is the original church. Not much is left. That was it. 52, 1,971 years ago, which is crazy. Uh, one of the oldest churches, I think maybe top five, top, it might be the oldest. No, there's no way. There's some really old ones in Syria and I think Ethiopia and Israel, they got some really old ones. In Greece, I think. In Italy, you know, in the Roman Empire, it was really illegal and really crazy to be a Christian. They were really nervous about it. Not all the time, but the, Ro the Christians like went underground. So that's why it was nice here because it wasn't illegal to be a Christian. You could do whatever you want. They had a bunch of Hindus and Buddhists probably and a bunch of other who knows what pagans <laughs> different kinds so they were like oh this new religion cool india yeah sure we'll do it too oh they had jewish people here at that time the story out. so foreign traders had been coming here for probably six thousand ten thousand years to this coast trading incense they really loved incense from here and they uh Spices, all kinds of stuff. The Romans definitely were coming here. And Greeks, Persians, Arabs, pre-Islam Arabs, and uh, all kinds of stuff. So, all kinds of people were heard about this. this they thought it was kind of cool. And we're going to go to the spot later where he went in what is now Chennai in the Chola Kingdom. So the Chola Kingdom is interesting because they influence Thailand and uh, Vietnam and... Indonesia and Malaysia, all those areas of those modern countries, they were Indianized and they went there and like, that's right, why they have like Buddhist Hinduism there because of the Chola Kingdom. Yes, I remember now. So we went over to the Chola, Chola Kingdom, which was not what this place was. This was something called Mizurim, Mizurim people, kingdom or something. And they were cool with them, man. They were like, yeah, build a bunch of churches. That's fine. And it, there's like, I think he, he might have went, went to China. China. I don't know. He was following the Silk Road routes, which the Han Dynasty of China just set up about um, 200 years or so before the story started, or 400 years, 300 years or so. 200 BC, the Silk Road started, so we're in 52 AD. So the Silk Road was connecting the Roman Empire all the way to India, China, by sea and land that the Chinese developed. Chinese came to this area too, but uh, they traded here also, but in majorly in the 1400s. So that's not part of the story. Okay, let me finish this story. Later on, an Italian Jesuit priest, who, Mr. Fenizio, he found this ancient church and was like, let's build a nicer one on top of it. And this is it. All right, so St. Thomas, let's go outside. Yes, St. Thomas, an apostle. Oh, if you didn't know who Thomas was, he's the one. Madam. Right, right next, next to, to Jesus, Jesus there, with the bald head and beard, behind the guy in the green seat. Okay. So Thomas was hanging out here. A bunch of people became Christian. Lots of Indians believe they are descended from those early Christians to this day that are called the Thomas Christians or something. Tom, Tom, something interesting like that. The guy wanted me to read the Bible. In English out loud, which I did a bunch. I just picked random pages. Uh, Mother Teresa, Albania, shout out. Um, and North Macedonia, Skopje. I've been to the home city where she grew up. 
actually Mother Teresa. So that's way different history. All right, let's look at the front of this church because it's pretty cool. It's, I guess, Italian-inspired. All right. So Mr. Thomas, I have a lot of friends named Thomas. Hello. Um, my good friend, oh, my God, his name is Thomas. He's so cool. Wow. Uh, what's, what, what up, man? man? This dude, uh, black, black dude, dude Bay Area, California. California. Thomas, Thomas, you're named after this guy. guy. <laughs> what up, T? They, they call him T. Crazy. crazy. Um, so, so many things are named Thomas. Thomas. Come on, like, the, the apostles' names are classic, crazy, crazy crazily used names. names. They, they have, have a school right here, here now. All right, All right so, so this is Italian inspired, 1600. 1600. And, uh, so Thomas... Found this area of Christianity for the first time. Which is the most religious country in the world with all kinds of things going on. Obviously, there was lots of Hindus. I, earlier today, I saw a 5,000-year-old temple. 5,000-year-old. So, you know, they've been doing all kinds of spiritual things. and Actually, Hindus, like, accept Jesus. I've seen pictures with, like, Krishna and Jesus right next to each other. They, they look at him as, like, another deity of... It's kind of interesting, actually. And of course, Islam knows about Jesus. Let's walk on this side. I haven't been over here. All right, so uh, Thomas, he took off from here. He might have went to China, they think. He might have went to some other areas of India. Or oh, for sure he did, like Karnataka, I think. Oh, that'd be nice over there, dogs. And uh, he went over to Chennai. He was, oh geez, what's that snake? God. He went over to Chennai and he was caught up there. They didn't like what he was doing, talking about. They didn't like him. A foreigner from where? The Roman Empire? What are you, Christian? From Judea? What? Execute him. What are you trying to do? Oh man, there's a graveyard here. Jeez, rest in peace. <laughs> um, execute him. They, caught, they arrested him and stabbed him to death. That's why he has a, we're going to go there later, so the end of this video is going to be there in like a few months, actually. I'm not going to release this now. Today is November 30th. What, what a life, life. Thomas. Thomas. He doubted, doubted Jesus. Jesus. He was his friend. He questioned Jesus when he was alive. He was like, well, how are you going to show us the way? Something like that. There's a few Bible quotes of him in the Bible. Uh, let's look at his cool face now. Here we go. The story up. So... St. Thomas story. So in Chennai, he was stabbed in the neck as the execution. Jeez. <laughs> All right, we have St. Saint, Saint, Saint Clara on the wall, Santa Clara, California. What's up? We have Mother Teresa on the wall here from Albania, Skopje fame. We have St. Peter from who got crucified upside down where the Vatican City now, which was Caligula's racetrack. We have the Holy Family, of course. Yes, Christmas is coming up. We have St. George, yes, killing the dragon devil. The patron saint of the country that I've been of, Republic of Georgia, they're Orthodox Christian, and also the patron saint of England, I think. Maybe not. Um, the Anglican Church, all right. Saint Jesus has get Gethsemane. I'm not sure what that is, actually. Uh, St. Teresa of Lisieux. Wow, someone just talked to me on Reddit about her. Interesting. She, they said she, would, they, she said she would pray to this saint for me, for my problems. A guardian angel. There's always a couple with me, man, at all times. Nativity of Jesus, of course, important event. Mother Mary with infant Jesus, classic picture. Mary is actually, like, probably my favorite figure in all of uh, the Jesus story. Jesus with children. He was a good teacher. Saint Sebastian. They really liked him in uh, India. He was killed by in the purges of Diocletian in the Roman Empire, 300 AD or so. Shot up with a bunch of arrows. They, Diocletian really didn't like Christians, even though his family was probably Christian. His wife and children <laughs> secretly, which is super weird. He just thought he was doing the right thing. I've been to Diocletian's palace in split Croatia. I like Emperor Diocletian. I'm not going to hate on him. I'm a Roman Empire fan. He was, thought he was doing the right thing by restoring the ancient ways that people were losing to try to save the empire. 
He didn't have to massacre a bunch of people, though. It was pretty crazy. All right, St. Francis Xavier of Goa fame and China fame, where he died on a boat trying to get into Ming, closed off Ming China outside of Hong Kong. And of Malacca fame, where another place that I've been. St. Raphael. Now, that one I'm not too familiar with. That's a cool picture, though. I don't know his story. Can't know everything, right? Ooh, Muslim girls get to go to the Catholic school. That's cool. Inviting of everybody. St. Joseph, of course I know. My father's favorite. My city, San Jose, California. It's named after him by the Spanish, 1777. The father of Jesus. Nice of him to raise a kid that wasn't his, technically. He was kind of an adopted son. <laughs> okay, just kidding. In a way, though. You know, he could have... Joseph could have been like, hey, man, I'm not cool with this, Mary. Who, how'd you get pregnant? I'm out of here. He could have done it. If you think about it. All right, there's all the saints. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. I wish they would have kept the guy in the 1600s. I wish he would have kept more of the original church pieces. It's kind of a shame when that happens. Is there some back here? Uh oh. Something up here. In English. So let's pick up. Uh, uh, at the place, I want me to read the Bible. In English, so let's pick a random page. See what I can. The man made me do this. All right, ooh, good one. Psalm 26. Plead for justice and declaration of righteousness. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, and go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving, and telling you all, Telling you all your wondrous deeds. Ooh, that was fun. All right. I want to find Jesus to actually do something. Come on. Here we go. Ezekiel again. I keep on going to this one. Number 40. The vision of the new temple. In the 25th year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after the city was struck down in Jerusalem, or that very day, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me here. He brought me in visions of... God to the land of Israel and set me down upon a very high mountain on which was a structure like a city to the south. When he brought me there, a man was there whose appearance shone like shone like bronze, woo, with a linen cord and a measuring reed in his hand. And he was standing in the gateway. The man said to me, "Mortal, look closely and listen attentively, and set your mind upon all that I shall show you." For you were brought here in order that I might show it to you. Declare all that you see to the house of Israel. Now there was a wall around the outside of the temple area. And more. Okay. Uh, at the place. Alright, so I think the British. Back. I think the British might have turned this to an Anglican church when they came here in the 17 or 1800s. Probably, potentially, because it said the word vicar, which is definitely an Anglican thing. Right. Yes, yes, we are going now. I documented this to the fullest. That's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, Henry VIII, he wanted to rid England of Catholics, so he did. <laughs> Created the Anglican Church, which is like a interesting thing. The State Church of England, I've been to... The cathedral in London where uh, Big Ben is I forget what its name is off the top of my head Canterbury anyways shout out to Anglicans I'm cool with you your Christmas is interesting I'd had Christmas in London one time let's go look at the pond the pond is where St. Thomas originally went Jainism and Buddhist for sure Hindus were here too some of them were sun worshippers. In 52 AD, when St. Thomas came to this area, he went to 
This pond where people were taking water in the palms and throwing up reciting some prayers, he was told that they were offering water to their sun god. And he said, if the water you throw up is acceptable to your god, it would not have fallen in back into the tank. Wow, good one. Apostle claimed that the god whom he has, was worshipping would accept his offering. Then he took water from the tank and prayed and threw it upwards. The water stays still in the air like the stars seeing the miracle. Miracle. This, the, the stars seeing this miracle, most of them accepted Christianity. Kali, Kali Kavu, sa, wow, bunch Sankarapuri. of. Sakarapuri. Palamatam. Pakalom, Pakalomatam were four important families among the Palayur community. Pele, your community, one of, from each family, was ordained priest by St. Thomas. Wow. Well, I'm glad he came over here and learned about that. That's crazy. Uh, the baptism pond. Cool. So they were amazed by this feat. <laughs> and got baptized in this ancient, ancient, ancient water well that uh, you see all around India on the spot. What? Yeah, St. Thomas. All right, so here's that story that I just told. The water floated in the air. <laughs> That's amazing. Right here. Uh, San Alfonso. Yes. Uh, uh, Santa, Saint, who's that one? Uh, Kerala. She came to Kerala. India. Uh, a nun. Nice. Very cool. All right, I'm going to go to the cave now. What Thomas had to do a couple times to escape from his enemies, hide in caves around India. Whoa. And he would hang out, read the Bible. It's a dangerous world, man. First century AD, anywhere in the world was life or death situation. He came in a cave and slept. Not this cave, this is a recreation, right? Re yeah, I closed it. Closed, okay. Interesting. Oh, back area, okay. Hi. This is what happened to him, I guess. <laughs> One Indian guy has a stick. He was beating him just like they do now with the sticks in India. And someone just stabbed them right in the back with a spear and killed them. Probably through the neck, maybe spinal cord. Pretty brutal. He was praying. You know, I don't know. If that embellishment, who knows how he really died. Could have been tied up. Just killed quickly. I don't know. But this was the spot he went um, when he first built the church here. This is a recreation of the cave and hill where this happened. Um in this AD. A little bit about the Jewish history here. They gave me a book. <laughs> uh, well known that before Christ, Jews had settled in different parts of Kerala. Here was one of the places of Jewish settlement. Because of this, it was named to be, come to be known as Jewish Hill. There was a Jewish synagogue in this settlement. It is believed that the Jewish presence might have attracted St. Thomas, who himself was a Jew, to come here. It was in this Jewish settlement that the apostles spent his days during his stay this settlement and synagogue of Jews here existed till the time of the military adventures of Tipu Sultan, the Muslim ruler of the Mysore period of 1790. Wow, 1792. Later, the Jews left this Palilur, this area, and gradually their settlement and synagogue ran into decay and disappeared. Wow. <clears throat> cool. Information. So he started seven Christian communities. Not really building huge buildings like churches. You know, they had an area probably. He had an area for the, they were baptized, which was this water. Assemble and pray. And he erected crosses. I don't know about that. Maybe. Pretty sure crosses was a later, like, 500, 1000 AD addition to Christianity where they stood. So I don't know about that actually. Um, anyways, later the Christians uh, constructed a small church building. So the original church of actual big building was maybe later than 52 AD. Glad I read this. <clears throat> so the church was built in architectural style of Kerala. Cross is about 200 years old. That's there. Italian priest fixed it up. Yeah, I know all that. All right, cool. Cultural museum next to church. Come on, there's a cultural historical museum. Oh, whoa. Okay, pilgrimage, that's what I did. <laughs> Something cool here 
There, we got St. Thomas. Oh, this is the boat that he came to India on. Ah, I like that. And a huge statue of him. So, St. Thomas, it, he came to India, pulled up on the shore here, where we're gonna walk to in a second. Uh, kind of, yeah, yeah, he did. Um, we're gonna walk to the beach from here. And he said, hey, I got something to teach you guys, man. I want to tell you about something cool that happened. This was a little recreation of his boat. Lots of wet in there. Whoa, there's lots of water in there. I can't step in there. That's okay. Wow, the shadows. Hold on. It's a pretty good sized statue. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how many meters that would be, but it's looking pretty big. Way up there. Wow. St. Thomas, they like this guy. The St. Thomas Christians of Kerala, India. Okay. See, I just read this, gotta read everything. Video's not over yet. This is the actual canal that was here that connected the cities around here. And he traveled here by boat down these canals and rivers. Jeez, a bird. Um, he came here from Ka Kadungalur. He came to visit the merchants at this city to preach the good news. Came by these waters and landed right here to come up, walked up over here and found that pond and then established his little church community right here because it was known as Jewish Hill. So he knew that there were Jewish people here. He was Jewish. He knew they would you know, keep him safe and hang out with them and stuff. And probably listen to the information about the Messiah and what just happened in Israel. It wasn't Israel. It was Judea province of Roman Empire. 52 AD, who was the emperor? Tell <laughs> me this nice man walking us around, showing us that everything. 45 feet high. Sorry to my international people. Meters, I don't know. Let me guess. Uh, third, no. 20, no. 15 meters? 20? Something like that? Coconut tree, I think. Yeah. I don't know. But that's it. The Indian Christian not, uh, Historical Museum is closed. My madam is hungry. Let's go to the beach. She's doing something. <laughs> yeah, St. Thomas. Oh, this, I'm a Roman history expert. When St. Thomas came here, Tiberius was the emperor of Rome. The second emperor after Augustus. He was emperor from 14 to 54 AD. And in the end of Tiberius' reign, he isolated himself on the island of Capri in southern Italy. He wasn't a very good emperor, the second one, actually. So it was a good time for Thomas and the apostles to leave the Roman Empire because, you know, it was kind of uh, Judea. They couldn't really... Jordan Airways? Yes, jo hey, Michael uh, Jordan, uh, Roman. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Air Jordan, yes. Jordan River, mm. where Jesus was, is named after. Uh, Jordan. Yep. Jordan, the country. Israel. Israel, yep, is right there. Palestine. Yep, big, big problem mm. right now. Yes, uh, I know. A war. Big war. Mm. Very sad. Yes, right now that is happening as the call to prayer goes off. Um, gate open. Gate open. Now close. Oh, gate open. Yes. The school. School. Uh -huh. No more. Yes. All right. She's doing something. Mm. Allah Allah Akbar. Akbar. <laughs> it's a church. Warm Israel, Palestine. Yes. There's always been problems in that area. For the past 3,000 years, there's been war in that region of Earth. The Holy Land. The home, hometown of Thomas here. He was from somewhere in Nazareth or something. <laughs> Bethlehem. I don't know where his hometown was. Wife silent. Wife is silent. Mm. Mobile search. Mobile work, working, mm. ma making project. Uh, mm. Maybe YouTube or uh, I don't know. YouTube. Something. She's networking with people uh, or something. Yeah. Mm. My wife, she'll be all right. Mm. All right, that's a good sign. <laughs> I keep on saying I'm gonna end this video. This video is gonna be long. This guy's super nice. You, it's okay, film you. What's your name? Uh, your good name? David C. David's. David C. Uh, good name. This guy's a good man. 
Good place. He'll help you out. You come here. David C. Ask for David C. God bless. <laughs> And here is the final destination of my journey today. Yes, the Malabar Coast. Another beach in India, the Malabar Coast. Ah. Yeah. It's my final destination. It's a weird kind of area down here, beach. I don't know what's going on, actually. <laughs> Lots of people down here. A lot of Muslims in this neighborhood. Uh -huh. It's a cool lighthouse down there. Wow. So yeah, ancient times, man. Ancient Chinese, ancient Romans, Persians, Greeks, Arabic, from people from the Caliphates, Muslim, traders, Portuguese, Dutch, British, French, Spanish. Who knows, man? So many people came along this coast, thousands of different cultures. <laughs>